And in Psycho Talk tonight, the righties, they're just falling all over themselves to seize on this, what they say, massive opportunity of massive snowstorms in D.C. as real proof that global warming just doesn't exist. Oklahoma Senator Jim Imhoff, his family, isn't it cute? They built an igloo on the National Mall and called it Al Gore's new home. Senator Jim DeMint from South Carolina tweeted that it's going to keep snowing in D.C. until Al Gore cries uncle. Funny. And then, of course, there's these bozos on the tube. It's the most severe winter storm in years, which would seem to contradict Al Gore's hysterical global warming theories. This administration is obsessed with global warming. While we've had these big snowstorms, the federal government, the Obama administration, talking about creating a new federal office to study global warming. It's interesting, though, given the fact that the weather is so rotten right now, and people are going, how can there be global warming if it's snowing and it's bitterly cold? Now... We, we know that all of those people went to a, an inconvenient truth, which was just absolutely filled with factual information. I, I'm sure all of them studied that. That's a lot of hot air from folks who don't believe in global warming at all or climate change. Let me clear this up. Global warming is a gradual process. Class in session from Fox. So you have to, you know, look at the long-term trends, not individual storms. The last decade was the warmest one on record. And global warming doesn't mean no more snowstorms. In fact, we may see stronger storms. Global warming means the air is getting hotter. Hot air can hold more moisture. So any given storm system can hold and then dump more snow. Uh, let me point out that the two major storms in the D.C. area this winter are among the 10 heaviest snowfalls ever recorded there. Uh, and they both happen within a few months of each other. So for right-wingers to use two snowstorms to completely discount global warming is ignorant psycho talk. The massive storm of misinformation continues to pour down upon the souls of this country. Yesterday, Rush Limbaugh attacked me by name. And check out this clip of yours truly from Glenn Beck's show last night. Not every global warming nut is hiding out during the blizzards. I want you to see this from MSNBC. These snowpocalypses that have been going through D.C. and other extreme weather events are precisely what climate scientists have been predicting, fearing, and anticipating because of global warming. Uh, Mr. Beck then went on to completely butcher the precise climate change theory he was in the process of attempting to attack. Watch. Our thermometer needs to start going like this because apparently the hotter it gets, the colder it becomes. Now, in addition to that being completely wrong on so many levels, it's also a total misrepresentation of the climate change theory that I was attempting to explain. Uh, let me be very clear. I do not believe that this storm is proof of climate change, and I do not believe that this storm is not proof of climate change. But I do believe that you, Mr. Beck, did a tremendous disservice to your viewers by bastardizing the most basic science behind the theory, period. That's not very good. But thankfully, guess who else has a chalkboard? So, Mr. Beck, let me try to explain this to you once again. There is a data set from the UN that claims that there has been a global temperature rise over the past 100 years or so of about 1.3 degrees. Come on in here, you can take a look at it. The theory, the theory basically states that the warmer climate would cause higher ocean temperatures, which means more ocean water evaporating. Think of this yellow line as the temperature curve. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold 100 years ago. Think of this line as the new temperature curve. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. And the average change between hot and cold running at 1.3 degrees. The idea, basically, that warmer air, yeah, warm, you can do this, yes? Mm -hmm. Warm air, my handwriting's not so great, but you get the point. As warmer air goes up, yeah, it takes H2O, water, yeah, into the air. More water in the air results in more precipitation on Earth. You know what the saying is, after all. What goes up must come down. Now, it might come back as more snow. It also might come back as more rain, depending on the temperature, hot or cold, on the specific place on the Earth at the time. 
Let's be phenomenally clear, Mr. Beck. I do not believe this storm is proof of climate change, nor have I ever said as much. My point, very simply, was that strong winter storms like the ones so many in this country have lived through over the past couple of days do not by any stretch of the imagination rule out climate change as conservatives like Mitch McConnell, Sarah Palin, Rush Limbaugh and yourself have suggested. At the same time, it is equally dumb for anyone to say that these storms do somehow prove that climate change is actually happening. One thing we can probably agree on, Glenn, is that I think the fear-mongering among many of the climate change proponents, like Al Gore, for example, is completely out of whack with the current body of scientific evidence. To that end, I also covered the reports of climate data manipulation extensively and personally felt like it was a disgusting breach of scientific evidence ethics. But I also know that you can cover the climate change debate without reducing yourself to this level of stupidity just to have fodder for your lefty righty games. So Glenn, the next time you'd like me to explain something that was said on this show or otherwise, we have red phones too. You can call me, invite me on your show. If you'd like, you can come on mine. Unless that sort of in-context, direct engagement scares you a little too much.